In this demonstration, we're going to explore how users can leverage the Disaster Technologies Data Hub to get access to critical information and data sets all from a centralized source. The Data Hub can then be used with their analysis platform, which is going to enable the creator class of advanced analytics to create data, build models, and deploy analytical workflows and results in order to respond efficiently to events that impact the global community. And given the relevance to current events, we're going to take a look at some data associated with COVID-19. We start by exploring a data set that provides historic statewide level ad hospital admission data. It's important to note that we measured a total hospital admissions because even though COVID-19 case data certainly has been front and center, we need to measure all activities at hospitals in order to get an accurate assessment of forecasting supplies and equipment needs. We can then use this statewide level historical data as an input for forecasting projections in the future based on machine learning models to predict the number of hospitalizations at a more granular level based on a variety of features. And we do this by mostly utilizing demographic information, as we've seen a strong statistical correlation between key features of individuals, such as income levels, ethnicity, socioeconomic backgrounds, and job or career segmentation. And in this chart, we can see that the statistical outlier is, of course, New York. This isn't news because we now know that this has been the epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic in the US. But areas that haven't gotten as much attention are states like Michigan, Louisiana, Connecticut, Maryland, as they've all seen a drastic spike in new cases and as such, new hospitalization admissions, especially given their overall population sizes and density. So the, for, the, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're gonna focus on Michigan as an area of interest and more specifically, the Detroit metro area. And as opposed to looking in the past, we're going to take a look into the future and pick a date to see how our forecast model predicts new hospital admissions on any given day. In this case, we'll select May 4th. And what this will ultimately allow us to do is to see forecasted projections of necessary equipment at hospitals and then interrogate the hospital data to determine whether or not they're equipped to handle the spike in admissions for all activities, not just COVID-19. We can now see zip code level data that projects new hospital admissions. The pink colored zip codes are the ones with higher forecasted rates, and as such, those will be our focus of interest. And then we can start to make some assumptions about how local hospitals or medical facilities will be impacted. If we look at all the zip codes in our area of interest here in this pie chart, a few in particular stick out as anomalies, but we can select the one that has the highest number, and that happens to be a zip code associated with Ann Arbor. Looking at the map, we can not only see where all the hospitals are located, but we can also scan a table and see relevant metadata associated with the hospital, such as their name, their location. But most importantly, we've taken a similar approach in forecasting the hospital admission rates to forecast inventory levels of critical supplies, such as PPE kits and ventilators at each of the hospitals. And in this example, we're specifically targeting the number of ventilators that we require, and the hospitals are thematically mapped accordingly where the pink ones are undersupplied based on the targeted date, blue are at risk or on the edge, and green are sufficiently supplied. We can see a few of the hospitals around Ann Arbor either have a deficiency of supplies or are teetering on the edge. And since this is a projected date into the future, we can run some analysis to mitigate this deficiency of medical supplies and see what actionable insights we can gain to get supplies to these facilities. First, we might look at medical equipment providers and in this general area, there happens to be one, which is signified on the map by the hollow green square. We can select that medical equipment provider and again, see relevant metadata, but most importantly, the number of equipment available. And in this case, again, equipment is referring to ventilators. One of the analysis we could run is to determine an isochrome or a drive time output against the road network to determine how long it would take vehicles to deliver supplies from this medical facility to all the nearby hospitals and other medical facilities. Each of the color-coded street segments are providing 10-minute drive time intervals to reach the outermost ring of the network. And using this, we could pre-plan the logistics of getting supplies to hospitals with enough time to ensure that the equipment is going to be available prior to the spike in admissions occurring. But looking at individual hospitals as well as medical suppliers is a very tedious and iterative approach to managing equipment supplies. Another approach might be to look at all of the medical equipment providers in the region and their ability to supply the hospitals. In this example, we created a network diagram that illustrates a relationship path from the medical suppliers to every hospital. 
and the color of the path signifies whether or not there's enough supply to fulfill the demand of each individual hospital. Whereas the ones that are pink are the ones that clearly designate ones that have, uh, or hospital relationships where the hospitals have too much demand in order to be supplied by the medical equipment provider. The ones that are blue are sufficient, and the ones that are green or yellowish color are the ones that have um, enough to meet the demands. But most glare, the most glaring uh, metric of this entire analysis is the bar chart, which shows a summation of all of the equipment demand uh, required for just the five nearest hospital facilities to each medical equipment provider. So each of these, each of the IDs along the x-axis is the ident is the ID of each medical provider, and we're seeing the summation of all the ventilators required to service just the five nearest hospitals. And it highlights something that we all know from observing the news and hearing from frontline hospital workers that the medical care professionals are woefully under-equipped to fight this battle. Now, this is just the early stages at a statewide level analysis. We could certainly start to enhance this to be more regionally, nationally, or globally focused, as well as evolve our analysis to become more prescriptive in terms of action that we can take to mitigate the supply issues or concerns. And that's where we're going to pick up this demonstration the next time around.